this is Heidi from Garden Crossings and today Carter and I, there's Carter, he's my driver, we're going to be heading out to the local Christmas tree farm to cut uh, uh, Christmas trees for our upcoming gnome porch planter parties. So today is, we picked the worst day ever to do this. It is so cold today, so windy, and it's like blizzard-like conditions, but yeah, we have time today to go do it, so hopefully we're gonna be okay. Um, I've got the hat, the gloves, the coat. I forgot, well, I didn't forget. I didn't think I was gonna need snow pants or, um, or what do you call them? Under, long underwear or whatever, under my pants. So I'm just going in jeans, so hopefully I don't freeze. So we'll see once we get to the tree farm how cold it actually is. I'm hoping we'll be fine, um, but if not, we might have to come back and do this another day. But I mean, it's a pretty day to be doing this because it's you know nice and snowy, but because it's so cold, it's just terrible. You can probably hear right now we're on a dirt road and kind of bumpy. Um, we're out in the country, so a lot of these roads are just snow covered and or drifting and such because there's no houses or anything to block any of the wind so there's just whipping over the roads and it also creates more of those whiteout type conditions so thank goodness the tree farm's only about maybe 15 minutes away from the greenhouse so we should be there shortly um, so yeah we'll see when we get to the tree farm how this is going to work today if we're going to brave the weather or say forget it we're going to have to go back another day we'll let you know in just a moment so it's currently snowing. You can see the roads here are totally snow covered and like we're gonna get into like whiteout-ish conditions here shortly because there's a lot of fields and such around us so the snow just whips and there's no buildings or anything to stop it and create it so it's not so whiteout-ish. So when we get to the Christmas tree farm, um, first of all, I gotta see if I can handle the weather because I, like I said, I didn't prepare for this cold of a day today. Uh, but we got to get it done. We're cutting Christmas trees for our gnome porch pot parties that are coming up. So, yeah, we'll see what they have out at the tree farm and see if today is the day we're going to be doing trimming or if we're going to have to wait and go back early next week and try again when the weather's maybe, hopefully, a little bit more favorable. So we just arrived at the tree farm. It is 24 degrees out with a feels like temperature of 10. So that's pretty cold. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be though. So we'll see how this goes. Um, I do have this little chainsaw I took. Don't laugh, it's, it's little. It only has probably a four, maybe six inch blade at best, um, but it's from the Saker company. They sent it to me, so we'll see what it does. Um, I've used it on some birch poles so far and I've been actually pretty impressed. Uh, so we'll see if it can take down a Christmas tree, but I know for sure it'll take branches off the Christmas tree. So we're gonna head out to the field, I think the field. Maybe we'll just do the lot, depends how long we last, and see what kind of trees we can find. So we we're just talking to the guys here at the Christmas tree farm, and they were nice enough to let us not have to go out and cut 15 trees. They have buckets of boughs that we're allowed to go through. So we're gonna be sorting through the boughs here and come up with a few hundred pounds and uh, do it that way. So this is, we're in a barn, it's not as cold, yes. and. Um, yeah, this way we can pick out just the kind that we want for the gnomes. So Carter's starting back there. Let's take a look. So these are the bins that we're going through. So we're just kind of sorting through, pulling out the evergreens that we're wanting to use. So this will be, this will be super helpful and not near as cold. And it's nice too, we can pick out just the shape and the types that we're looking for. So we're just kind of creating two piles, the good and the bad, and off we'll go.
warming up by the fire here. This is so nice to be able to have a little warming station. We were lucky we were working mostly in the barn, but man, this is a fun, cozy place to hang out and get all warmed up. So get my fingers warmed up a minute and then we'll go check a few more things and see if there's anything else we need here. But for now, this is feeling really toasty. Such a beautiful Christmas tree farm. They've got several different kinds of evergreens here. It just feels so festive. They've got U-cut, they've got pre-cut, a bunch of little fun places for the kids to sit and do little photo ops. A little fire there to warm up by. All right, Carter's getting the trailer all backed up for us. So we'll get these greens loaded right in. Took the dump trailer today. So we'll just, I think, slide the box right on and then pull the tarp over the top. Or maybe we're emptying out the box. Well, that was a fun adventure out here at the Christmas tree farm. So glad we have this done. And now we're ready to do some gnome porch pot parties here in the upcoming weeks. And uh, let's see what Carter's favorite part of this whole day was. So Carter, what was your favorite part of this whole day today? The popcorn balls I remember from when I was like four years old. Oh, it's been a long time since we've been to this tree farm. Is it everything you ever remembered? Yep. But better? Yep, we didn't have to lay on the ground this time. <laughs> no, that is true. All right, heading home in this beautiful winter wonderland. This is Heidi and Carter from Garden Crossings. All right, so we're back from the tree farm and I didn't actually need to use my chainsaw there because obviously we were going through bins of pine boughs, which was super nice. Um, but now that we're back, some of the pine boughs are pretty big. Like this is much bigger than what we're gonna need for the project. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this little chainsaw to kind of trim them and size them up. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this. So this is a Saker chainsaw, just really small handheld chainsaw. It's got a battery on it, so it's battery operated. The battery just plugs in to a charger and charge it up and let it snap it on and let it run. Um, you've got the hand shield here for protection. There's a little button you push, pull the trigger and it's ready to go. So very small, but perfect for just kind of those small projects that you may need just a little help with trimming things. So this branch here, number one, is longer than what we're gonna need. So I'm gonna just go in here, anchor it down, push the button and trim it up. So it trimmed it up nicely and now it's more the size we're gonna need um, for our gnome porch pots that we're gonna do. So we're gonna go through all the branches and get them trimmed appropriately for the project. If it's a smaller little twig, we might just take our little snippers. Um, if it's bigger, uh, let me grab another one here a minute. So here's a super long branch. And this is too long. The trimmers won't go through this very well. So first of all, let me figure out what I got here as far as what I'm going to need. So these little wispy ones down here probably aren't going to really be needed for our project. These up here are a little bit longer, so these will look nice. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just hold it here and see how it works. There we go, trim through that nicely. The other thing we were using this on the other day was on the birch logs that were probably about two inches, maybe three inches, and it just zipped through those really nice as well. So if you're just looking for a nice little handheld chainsaw, um, the Saker one has been working pretty good for the projects that we're doing. So now we're gonna go and um, trim these up. This is a really nice soft evergreen i'm not sure what it is the tree guy gave us a few different branches just to add some texture Ooh, this one smells really nice it almost smells like oranges sort of but yeah that'll be pretty just add some different texture a lot of what we have is fraser fir which i like too because fraser fir is not pokey you can rub your hands on it and it doesn't poke you it's nice and soft 
uh, shorter needles. So that will be nice too, a little bit more denser type habit than some of the other uh, greens that we've been using. So we'll go ahead, get these all sorted up, trimmed up and kitted up so that we're ready for our gnome planting party. If you're wondering what a gnome planting party is, we will be posting a video of me creating a gnome planter so that you can know how to do it if it's something that you're interested in doing at home. This is Heidi from Garden Crossings.